So the Apple Card has been out for two years now. I've been using it ever since release back in August of 2019. Should you apply? Here's my long-term review. I remember when the Apple Card was first announced, it was only sent out to invitational customers. So you have to fill out your Apple ID and just hope that Apple would be able to send you an application. But fast forward to today, 2021, you can now sign up for the Apple Card by launching up the wallet application on your iPhone, tap on Apple Card, fill out your credentials such as your social security, upload your driver's license or ID, and you can see your available credit right then and there, which is awesome. Now keep in mind, you won't get hit with an inquiry just yet until you confirm everything. Once you tap on done or confirm, you can start using your Apple card right away via Apple Pay. You can request for the physical card, which I have right here, this Titanium Beauty, but 90% of the time, I use my Apple card through Apple Pay. I never really use my physical card. The pizzeria that I go to, Apple Pay. Moe's, Apple Pay. Gas, Apple Pay. Everywhere you go, it's Apple Pay. And the cooler thing about it is, if you have an Apple Watch, you double press the side button, just like that. Or if you have an iPhone with Face ID, you double press the side button, or a Touch ID iPhone, you double press the home button, it pulls up your Apple Pay, and you can be able to purchase things like that. That is just so cool. That's the way how you should use your Apple Card. And the reason why I do that is because of the cash back system. It's 1% cash back if you use your card physically with the physical card. And it's 2% cash back if you use your iPhone or Apple Watch. And it's 3% cash back if you're purchasing things through Apple.com or Apple Retail or select partners. And this is real cash. No points, no gimmicks, no waiting for a whole month to receive it. And then the best thing about it is you could transfer it to your bank and then you could pay your Apple card using that cash back and that's still the same treatment as paying your bill. It's the same thing. You, you buy something one day, you get the cash back the next day. You can request for a physical card. That is really where all the fun starts. Being able to unbox it and have that special card. It's like you've been invited to an Apple event kind of. And just activating your card is so much more cooler. You just open it up, you hover your iPhone to the package or the envelope and you can be able to activate your card right there. It's just a couple of taps and you're done. You don't need to call this one or go online. That's all you have to do. Now the card is made out of titanium. It is real titanium. You don't have no credit card numbers, no expiration dates, or even the security code. Your card only shows the name, MasterCard, and Goldman Sachs. Requesting for a physical Apple card is 100% free. So Apple designed the card, they designed the user interface, but Goldman Sachs is the issuing bank and MasterCard is the global payment network. So you can use your Apple card anywhere where MasterCard is accepted. But like I mentioned, use Apple Pay if it's accepted. I was looking this up on Apple. It is recommended that you have a 600 or a higher credit score. And this goes without saying, use your card responsibly. If you can't afford it, please don't charge it. Jay-Z said it best, you can't afford it unless you could buy it twice. Credit cards can really ruin your life and you don't wanna jeopardize your credit score. And even your credit utilization, make sure it's below 30%. Anything higher than that, you're, you're, getting, you're going overboard. You're ODing now. But call me an Apple fan, this is the best credit card UI portal. Everything is front and center, easy to read graphs, every single purchase you made with the name of the merchant alongside the location, place, and the cashback percentage. All your transactions are broken down into categories, so you guys see all these colors behind me right now. These are all the colors that are on your Apple card. So you have red for health, orange for food and drink, yellow for shopping, green for travel, blue for transportation, purple for services, pink for entertainment. So I have all the colors right behind me indicating those categories. And that's why that's why you guys see all these colors here. Now, most of my purchases are towards food and drink and shopping, of course, but you can track your spending, see how much money that you spend for the month. And it actually gives you a percentage of how much money that you spend. And you give you a, a nice annual graph and since everything is broken down to those colors and categories, you can see how much money that you're spending on shopping, food, drink, health. It's amazing. Now, if you tap on a transaction, you're presented with a beautiful interface. You have a picture of the store, you have the icon, and you also have a map on where the store is located. And you can even see your transaction history. So you can go all the way back in time to see your previous times that you 
purchase from the same exact store. You can even call the store if you tap on the store name. Now, if you don't recognize the transaction, you could tap on it, report an issue, and then you could be able to talk to a Goldman Sachs representative. Now, recently, Apple has introduced Apple Card Family. You can share your Apple Card with members of your family sharing group, track their spending, pay a single bill, build credit together and receive daily cash back. You can invite anyone over the age of 13. So this is a good opportunity to build your child's credit or someone, someone of your family member. Unfortunately, I never use this feature because I don't have any kids and I don't have anybody who I would share my Apple card with. But yeah, that's pretty cool. And then you can also see what they buy in. They have their own portal and yeah, it's pretty good. This is the first card that actually encourage you to pay less interest. I love the fact how they show you how much interest that you'll be paying if you pay this amount. Other credit cards don't do that, surprisingly, and I feel like that's a crime. <laughs> Even though it's not legally, if you pay an amount on a standard credit card, they don't tell you your interest that you're paying. Um, the Apple Card, they show it to you right there. Now, this doesn't really phase me too much because I always pay the full amount every single month. I don't even think about interest. I don't even think about the APR at all because I always pay my credit cards in full. The Apple Card valuable APR range between 10.99% to 21.99. So pretty standard. Now, yes, indeed, there are no fees on the Apple Card. So no late fees, no foreign fees, no annual fees, any fee that you can think of, there are no fees whatsoever on the Apple Card. So even though you don't have any late payment fees, you still gotta worry about your credit score, and then you still gotta worry about that interest rate. So, and you even have the option to pay now or pay later. If you pay now, you can authenticate with Face ID or Touch ID, and then you've just successfully paid your bill. If you pick pay later, you are presented with these dates that you can uh, schedule a payment for your Apple Card, and then you still authenticate with Face ID or Touch ID. If you buy a lot of Apple products, you're gonna love the Apple Card. You have monthly installments. So if you're buying a MacBook, for example, for $3,000, you could be able to pay monthly for it. That's what I did with my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which you guys are seeing it right here on the ultra wide monitor. And it just makes purchasing Apple products a little bit more easier. You can even pay the monthly amount or you could pay a little bit more this month, but either way, you're still gonna pay that much. Now, I'm not really a big fan of this. I can see why it's been introduced, but I'm just the type of person that I like to just buy something one time. I don't wanna be able to pay monthly payments with it. You know, I'm just not, that's just not my style. I like to just buy it, one and done it, and that's it. The only reason why I did the monthly installment for my MacBook Pro is because of the room video. If you guys missed my room video, that was an arm and a leg, it's just super expensive. I had the money for it, but I didn't wanna run myself too dry. Even some months you can add more to it or just pay it off next month. It's just good to have that little wiggle in room. Absolutely love the customer support. You can either text Apple, you can call them or visit their website. But 90% of the time I just text Apple, I go about my day and they respond very quickly. You can see your card information. You will have to authenticate either with Face ID or Touch ID, depending on your device. And you can see your card number, your expiration date, your security code. Or if your card has been compromised, you can request a brand new card number without physically replacing the entire physical card. Now, if you happen to lose your physical card, you can be able to cancel that card and Apple could be able to send you a new one. Or you can just request a new one if it's just getting beat up. It's totally free. If you like to buy the iPhone every single year, the Apple Card is probably the best way to charge it. Way better than the Apple Upgrade Program, just because with that, you have to send in your old iPhone every single time if you want the new one. Um, but with this, you can keep your old iPhone, you can still trade it in, it's your choice, and you still have the monthly installment plan. So if you buy Apple products, you use Apple Pay, the Apple card is for you. Let me know down in the comments down below if you have any questions or concerns. Drop a like on this video, help me out tremendously. Make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on for more videos like this. And other than that, your boy Pops, and I hope you guys have a simple day. Peace.